I first got involved and interested in aquaponics from reading about permaculture and reading about aquaculture and how aquaculture plays into um, hydroponics or permaculture and how those two interrelate. And I wanted to build a, a permacultural system that incorporated fish and sort of, you know, because that seemed like the element that was being left out. Um, that led me to a thing called aquaponics, which at that time was really, really unheard of. Aquaponics is the way to grow plants using fish. And what you do is you put fish in a fish tank, you take their poop and you put their poop into what we call a biofilter. And from the biofilter, it oxidizes and turns into nitrogen. It's cleaned up and it's pumped into the plants. And plants respond uh, being immersed in water. It's only the very base and the very bottom of the roots that are exposed to the water. And because in nature, when plants are in the soil, their natural instinct, if you will, is to go for water. And because there is an abundance of water, the roots just keep growing and growing and growing. And because they grow, the top of the plant photosynthesizes rapidly yeah, too to extenuate yeah, that yeah. growth and grow more rapidly. And there's the root system of the kale. Hail, hail the kale. Right there. Nice and healthy. Well, the advantages of farming this way is uh, number one, the plants generally grow twice as fast as they do in the earth medium. And as far as like how and where, sky's the limit. You can do it on rooftops, backyards, you can do it in a barrel, you can do it in a fish tank, and you can do it under a 20,000 acre greenhouse, which is being done right now in China. Aquaponics uses 90% less water than conventional agriculture. And number two, we're doing this in a parking lot. And that's the power of aquaponics, is the, the versatility and the fact that you can do it anywhere. In times of drought and desert areas, and uh, even in the Midwest, uh, Arizona, uh, Texas, Colorado, there's no reason why an aquaponic system cannot exist in any of those areas, even in the desert in Las Vegas. The opportunity for actually going underground with aquaponic systems, putting fish tanks underground and using the solar energy above and using the incredible light and heat intensity of those areas to grow plants at extraordinary levels and rapidly, the potential is enormous. So this is the nursery raft and we have water that comes off on twice a day. And we've got cucumbers, cilantro, kale, and tomatoes that are coming up. These guys are about a week old. Um, we've got some chilies, they take a while. They take about six weeks at least to start merging out, which is maybe even longer. Um, and the way this table works is automatically the water's pumped up from the system it comes underneath the rafts and then it flows back into the system. So it's, you know, if we're here or not, it doesn't matter. And this is coconut fiber mixed with perlite. And uh, we have a lot of it over there. And then we, we, we just put it in here. We plant a seed in there. And the water saturates from the bottom up. So that's the way we, we basically water. And as you can see, the little roots, the root system on that right now, And he's starting to, or she, or <laughs> the plant person, is starting to feed onto the water, which is underneath, which is getting ready at that stage to go into the main system. This is the RO system that we use to convert the hard water that we have because we're on well water. We're using this to convert the water into um, basically like a soft water for our fish. It demineralizes, takes a lot of the calcite out of the water because the water's very hard, and then puts it into the system. And right here we have a, this is the kale. This is a 37 watt pump, and this basically takes care of all the pumping that we do. Off of that one pump, it takes the water all the way up the side all the way along these pipes, 
all the way along these pipes, all the way along these pipes, this pipe I should say, these pipes. The energy footprint is really low. We're off a 37 watt pump, which is um, with the pumps that we're running, it's about 10 cents a day. But this whole house is off the grid where we are currently, and you can run this whole system off the grid with a few solar panels. Um, so energy efficient, it's very energy efficient. You know, i.e. you could run it in the desert off a couple of solar panels, have a trickle charger at night for the uh, diffusers and the aerators. You know, it, it'll just run by itself. These are our tomatoes. They're coming on. I'm trying to train them to come up and over, so <laughs> hopefully they'll do that. Um, and it's amazing the amount of tomatoes that, that um, are on these things. We must about have 150 tomatoes right now. This is our, um, these are our control boxes that we use. This is at 79 right now, and this will stay a constant day or night. It may drop a degree. Uh, we have a thermal map that controls the temperature, so that's what we do. And when the water gets uh, a little chilly or, you know, goes down, you know, 75, it kicks in and it brings the water up to about 79, 80. And if it goes, you know, too much, much above that, 73, uh, 83, um, it cuts out. And the fish really like it warm, but the plants don't. So a happy medium is like for us, like 79, 80 degrees. In here, we have the nerve center of our control, which is basically we have um, an automatic fish feeder. We have a diffuser. We have different types of foods. This is for the, you know, babies. This is for the mosquito fish. This kind of feed, this is for the, this feed is for the little fingerlings, the little baby fish. It's a high protein diet, which is what they need when they're growing, like kids or anybody else. And, uh, and then when they get more adult, they need more carbohydrates and protein. So this is the mix that we use in the fish diet. Now these guys are getting to about half a pound or a pound. They actually need this. And we have an automatic fish feeder. I'll just put this back on. All right, and if these guys are willing, they may already be fat and sassy, so they may not want to um, have some food right now. But if they do, okay. And we'll see if they come up. They may not because I think they've already been fed. Uh oh, there they are. Uh oh. <laughs> There they go. Oh boy. Look at them. Oh my God. These guys were just like two inches long when we got them. And uh, like six months, they've just, they've gone, you know. Look at their faces. It's amazing. They've got all their whiskers and they're just really healthy looking fish. Oh, that guy just got one. If they look at you just to say, oh, am I going to get one? Look at them. <laughs> You see that guy? I, I talk to him in the morning and when I talk to him, they come up, they know it's me. And they're just like, oh, okay, it's him. And they come up and look, they're great, they're characters. Uh, we have channel catfish, which are really, really tasty and they're good fish. And um, because they're not wallowing around in the mud, uh, they're gonna be exceptionally nice to eat. And the idea is to eat them. The difficulty is for me is that I raise them and I feed them and they're my babies and I'm gonna, I don't know, I'll have to cross that bridge when I come to it, but it's gonna be tough. But the idea is, yeah, in farming, you have to do those things. These guys are bullfrogs <laughs> and uh, they'll, be, <laughs> they'll be in the system too. The fish really love the raft. They don't wanna come out from under it, but there they are. Whee! My favorite part about being out here with my plants is that I get to be out here with my plants and my fish and my fish are my pets and, and the plants are my little, you know, I don't know, every time I turn around they seem like they grow a little bit or they do something different and I always seem to have an excuse why I've got to go do something else here and then I'm, I find myself wandering back and forth and then, you know, putting this right, setting this, tidying this up and then watching it all and then thinking, God, this is really cool. And I love the sound of it and the feel of it. And I'm looking, oh my God, another two hours has gone by. And I'm like, I've got to go, I've got to go home or something. You know, I've got to, uh, you know, I got to leave. But it's very sort of, it's stimulating in a fact that you get the negative ions from the water and there's a tranquil, serene feel. We have frogs in the system. 
we have uh, mosquito fish in the system, we have lizards that scurry around, we have rabbits that are tearing our lettuce apart that we have to cover up. We've, we've got you know, unlimited possibilities of what we can try and grow in here. And um, the whole thing is just such a creative, creative uh, venture that it, it is very hard to leave. And, and that's why I like it the most is because I find myself just kind of loving the whole aspect of it. So yeah, it's um, very cool.